Thank you for your interest in our video. Today we want to make a brief introduction about the development of in vitro diagnostic antibody. And I hope what I provide will help you. Our introduction includes development background, principle and process of antibody development, as well as difficulties in antibody development. In vitro diagnostics, also known as IVD, refers to the diagnosis and detection of human diseases in vitro by diagnostic reagents using samples such as human tissue, blood or cells. At present, the global in vitro diagnostic market is expanding constantly. It was $54.6 billion in 2013 and $66.4 billion in 2018. This giant pharmaceutical market contains a wide range of diagnostic products, and one of the most noteworthy is diagnostic antibodies. This shows that in vitro diagnostic antibodies have great development prospects and broad market space. By the principle of specific binding of antigens and antibodies, it is possible to develop highly specific in vitro diagnostic antibodies against biomarkers, thereby diagnosing diseases. Therefore, we should pay more attention to the antigen-antibody interactions. First, specificity. Due to the complementary spatial structure of the antigen and antibody, the combination of the two has high specificity. Second, reversibility. The reaction between antigen and antibody is a process of dynamic equilibrium. Under certain conditions, the antigen-antibody complex can dissociate while the antigen and antibody return to a free state. Finally, proportionality. The reaction between antigen and antibody follows a certain quantitative relationship. When the ratio of antigen to antibody is appropriate, the peak portion of the curve appears. Before and after the equivalence band are the excess antibody bands and the excess antigen bands. Therefore, only grasping these characteristics, we can develop antibodies with high sensitivity and high specificity. B lymphocytes producing specific antibodies can be obtained by injecting antigen into mice, but B lymphocytes cannot proliferate indefinitely and cannot grow in vitro. However, myeloma cells can grow indefinitely in vitro. The hybridoma technique is to fuse myeloma cells with immunized lymphocytes to obtain hybrid myeloma cells. Such cells are characterized by the production of specific antibodies and long-term in vitro proliferation. Specific antibodies against one or more antigenic determinants can be prepared by using a population of cells derived from a single fused cell culture. The development of in vitro diagnostic antibodies is roughly divided into five steps. 1. Injection of immunogen into immunized animals. 2. Cell fusion. 3. Selective culture. 4. Screening and cloning of hybridoma positive clones. 5. Mass production of antibodies. We take PDL1 monoclonal antibody preparation as an example to explain the production process. Programmed cell death ligand 1, as known as PDL1, are abnormally high expression in certain tumor environments. It can inhibit the immune system and promote tumor progression, resulting in tumor immune escape. In order to develop PDL1 antibody, the first step is to inject mice with antigen to obtain specifically immune B lymphocytes. We use mouse at 6 to 8 weeks and inject a recombinant PDL1 extracellular domain protein by abdominal subcutaneous multiple immunization. Antigen enters the peripheral immune organs through the blood circulation or lymph circulation, stimulates the corresponding B lymphocyte clones, activates, proliferates, and differentiates into sensitized B lymphocytes. The second step is cell fusion. After the mice were sacrificed, the spleens were removed under aseptic conditions and the B cells were isolated by grinding. Then, homologous myeloma cells and mouse spleen cells were mixed in a certain ratio, and polyethylene glycol was added to promote cell fusion. Under the action of polyethylene glycol, lymphocytes and myeloma cells are fused to form hybridoma cells. The purpose of selective culture is to screen fused hybridoma cells. After fused, Cells were cultured in hat selective medium. Unfused myeloma cells cannot survive in the medium due to the lack of hyposanthine guanine phosphate ribosomal transferase. Simultaneously, lymphocytes also die due to their inability to survive in vitro for long periods of time. Therefore, only fused hybridoma cells can survive in this selection medium. Next, we need to screen cells from surviving hybridoma cells that specifically produce PDL1 antibodies. ELISA WB, high throughput screening can be used for screening. The screen cells are then desiluted and cloned. After comprehensive identification of the type, subclass, specificity, affinity of the immunoglobulin, 
the epitope of the recognized antigen and the molecular weight of the secreted PDL1 antibody, the cells are cryopreserved in time. In general, Methods of in vivo induction and in vitro culture are commonly used to prepare antibodies in large quantities. For in vivo induction techniques, hybridoma cells were inoculated intraperitoneally in bulb slash sea mice. The cells proliferate in the peritoneal cavity of mice and produce PDL1 antibodies. After about one to two weeks, the mouse abdomen increased. A large amount of PDL1 antibodies can be obtained by extracting ascites by injection. For in vitro culture, the hybridoma cells are cultured in a culture flask. Hybridoma cells produce and secrete PDL1 antibodies during culture. Then, the culture supernatant was collected, and the cells and fragments were removed by centrifugation to obtain isolated PDL1 antibodies. However, the antibodies produced by this method are very limited. Although antibody development techniques are mature, there are still some difficulties in the development process. Firstly, the antibody development cycle is long, and the cost is high. Secondly, the positive results screened are few and are easily lost. In addition, although the specificity of the developed antibodies has been experimentally verified, there are still some antibodies that cannot effectively activate the complement and FC receptor effector systems in the human body, and are often eliminated by the human circulatory system. As the preferred antibody supplier for global customers, Creative Biolabs are confident to provide you with first-class services covering a full range of applications. If you have any need of in vitro diagnostic antibody development, please contact us. We will be in 100% of the effort and offer 100 points of the service.